Praise the Lord, saints. Welcome to another Bible study here at Friendship Mission Church for the homeless and the poor here in Montgomery, Alabama. Pastor and founder, Vince Rosado. My name is Minister Warren Rudd, and today we're going to have a special Bible study. It's not going to be so much of a in-depth word study, but it will be dealing with a person's emotions, a person's behavior, and a person's feelings. So today we're going to be talking about something called rest. R-E-T-S, standing for Rational Emotive Spiritual Therapy. And it was done by a man by the name of Dr. Rick McKinney, back here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where I'm from. But today we're just gonna cover some foundations. You know, the ministry asked me to just bring it back again so that we can recover certain things. But last time we did it, we did it for like eight weeks long. So today we're gonna just sit back and understand the rest principles and the ABCD principles of rest and what rest can really help you do. I don't know if some people want to work it, some people may not work it, but the point is it works if you use it. So as I always say, get your Bible, get your paper, get your pen, and get ready for a mighty word from God. And as I say, there you go, right there. Mm -hmm. God bless. Amen. Amen. And let's cross in the path of the camera, please. First of all, cross the line, man of God is disrespectful. I always try to tell y'all, but I know we get new people all the time, so let us pray. Father, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for the word that's going to come forth. Father, you're, you're giving a word, but you're also giving an instruction tonight to those who want to grab these things, grab these principles, and learn how to defeat their emotions, learn how to defeat their addictions, learn how to defeat their uh, mental illness, learn how to defeat their negative thoughts, anger, anxiety, you know, uh, anything that's negative, Lord. And, uh, the house that asked me to come back and re reteach this yes. and bring the foundations of rest again. So I ask you that you edify me, that I may be edified, and let me decrease so that you may increase. I ask these things in Jesus' name. In Jesus if name. you agree with me, let the house say amen. 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 Now, before I get started, please, I've noticed there's a lot of talk about the men of, men of God in this that is not a time for conversation. Amen. It ain't nothing wrong with you agreeing with a man of God when he is saying something that you agree with, such as amen, hallelujah, praise God, brother, preach on. But you are really, really disrespectful when you're holding a separate conversation. That thing picks up everything you are saying. When I go home and people contact me through email, pastors, and whoever say, I hear those people having negative conversations on the side. I hear those people cursing on the side. Come on, you're still in the house of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. You wouldn't go to your own home church or go to a church that's Presbyterian or Baptist or anywhere else. Why don't you come to friendship and act like that? Amen. You know, they're going to walk up to you and tell you, would you please be quiet? Amen. I don't have a microphone, so I have to let my voice carry. And there are some people who want this and don't want to hear your negative comments. Amen. 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 Amen? So if you don't want it, shut up. But let those who want it get it. Amen? Amen. I don't care that you don't want it. My job is just to put it out there. So I'm putting it out there for those who want it. If you don't want it, you still got to sit here and listen to it anyway because you ain't the food. All right? So if you don't like it, go to sleep on God. That's between you and him. And like Pastor would say, go straight to hell. But to those of you who want it, I'm giving it to you. Amen? I have to get involved with it because it really hurts me. I love y'all. I've been through every addiction y'all been through and every situation y'all been through. But if you don't want it and all you want was a meal, then go to sleep. But you will wake up in fire. Because your ears still hear the truth. And you can't deny it when you stand before Christ. So today we're going to be talking about something called rest. It was done by a guy named Dr. Rick McKinley out of Philadelphia. And he did it to help prisoners, homelessness, addicted people, to teach them their thought pattern to change their thought pattern can help them change their life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Your situation ain't dire because you ain't dead. That's right. As long as you ain't dead, you still got a chance. Amen. Anybody hear me? Amen. 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 So rest stands for rational, emotive, spiritual therapy. Go to Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Look at God. Well, we get in the houses for the women. Amen? Amen. Amen. And the greatest thing is that two denominations are teaming up. You rarely see denominations teaming up to come together. You got the Presbyterians and the Baptists teaming up to help you. They usually fight over doctrine, but now they come.
come together because they have the same cause, the poor. Amen. 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 Matthew 11, look at verses 28 to 30. And it says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, yeah. and I will give you what? Yes. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find what? Rest, Rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen? Amen. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And I think that's the spiritual concept that God is trying to take. Rest right. Give it to what? Rational, immortal, spiritual therapy. Rational refers to one's thoughts and beliefs. Okay? The world of psychology uses this. They call it RET, R-E-T. Amen? They call it RET, R-E-T. If you want to hold another conversation, so worry about man. You no, can. I, I would just okay. say I need a Bible, but I can't. I can't. Okay. If you need a Bible, you can share. All right? But don't distract. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Now, rational refers to one's thoughts and beliefs. Emotive refers to one's emotions and feelings. Now, spiritual therapy, what? He notes internal healing from a spiritual source, and that source is going to be who? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, if you really listen to me, it's the same thing that got me delivered from my mental illness, my drug addiction, and my stinking thinking. Amen? Amen. It ain't no overnight process, because the last time we toured here, we toured it for like eight weeks, right? Yeah. So I'm just going through a foundation to help you get a principle. Yeah. All right? Anybody bound by an addiction? I don't Amen. want to name it. But if you're bound by some kind of addiction, there ain't no person in this room that ain't got an addiction. Amen. I don't care whether it's drugs or alcohol, you're addicted to something. Amen. Amen. Anybody in here that don't have an issue? You are a lot. Everybody in this room got some kind of issue. Amen. Amen. Might not be the same, but it's an issue nonetheless. Amen. Amen. So, we're going to be looking at this in its, in its entirety here. Rest is not about religion, but about spirituality. Religion desires an individual to be a practitioner of that religion. And I tell you all the time, I'm not religious. I am not religious. Christianity is my lifestyle. Amen. When I was religious, I was a hypocrite. Amen. Amen. See, you don't hear too many people say that. But when I became a real Christian in lifestyle, Amen. I knew I could make a mistake in the God of my Lord and Savior named Jesus Christ who gave me for me. But in my religion, I had to hide my mistake. And it was sending me to hell. Amen. Because it was the religious that killed him. Amen. 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 The intended goal of the spiritual process is to lead each individual to become the best, positive, healthy, and productive person possible that he or she can become. What you can expect from studying this rest right now, your knowledge about addictions and related negative behavior will increase. You'll develop a model by which to continuously change your behavior. Your addictive behavior will decrease and or disappear completely. You'll have more control over your impulses. So I'm going to show you all this. Because it ain't nothing but a terrible thought. Every time I thought about it, it was like seconds. I said, boy, I want some crap. And I just go do it. But when I begin to change it, come in my head, I want you to get hot. No, I'm going to serve the Lord. Amen. And it was gone. Because it only appears like that. I know a lot of people say, man, you don't go rob somebody today. They go do it, now they got 30 years in jail. Over a stupid thought. Amen. You'll be able to better control your negative emotions. Your level of self-confidence and self-esteem will increase. You'll replace all negative thoughts with positive spiritual thoughts. Your level of stress will decrease. Are y'all happy? Yeah. Amen. You will feel a new power in your life. Your relationship with others will improve. Rest is based on the belief that any learned behavior can be unlearned, including drugs, alcohol, tobacco. Amen. Amen. Now, Dr. McKinley wrote this. Addictions are falsely referred to as victimless crimes. Do you know being addicted, even if you're on drugs, do you know you affect your family and children too? Yeah. Yeah. They don't get it? Yeah. Amen. You just think, it's only about me, I'm only hurting me. But at the same time, you're hurting those who love you. Amen. Amen. You think your family members who love you want to see you in homelessness? They want to see you in prison? They want to see you bound and sleeping on the street? No. 
because it hurts them too. They can't talk to you because you're drunk. They can't talk to you because you're in no zone. Sitting on silly, waiting on stupid, and thinking on dumb. They can't talk to you. No matter how much they love you. Amen? Quite to the contrary, addiction of one person takes many persons hostage. It usually leads to antisocial behavior, destroys families, and promotes criminal behavior or activity. The addicted person is a prisoner and slave of the drug and therefore a slave of evil one behind the drug. Most of the world's religions do not see addiction as a mythical problem, but a phase of a spiritual war between good and evil. And I believe that. I believe all drug addiction is demonic. But the Bible says it is. You know why it's demonic? Because it changes you from who you really are. One of the things I had to learn when I finally got sober was I never knew my own personality. I had been getting high so long that when I finally sobered up, I didn't know I was naturally hyperactive. I didn't know I naturally moved real fast. But the people who were in my life and in my family, when they saw me acting like that, they got automatically thought I was hot. But I had to learn that this was a part of my real personality. But I never knew it. So every time they see me going like this or getting angry, you must be high. No, I wasn't. I'm learning me too. Now I'm real loud, that's a part of me. But the only time I act like that is when I was high. So it was even new to me when I got sober. See? All right, where were we at? The addicted person is a prisoner. All right, here we go. Most of the world, uh, most of the world's religions do not see addiction as a medical med medical problem, but as a phase of spiritual warfare between good and evil. They each hold their members who are addicted as being responsible for their own actions and believe that they are or should abstain from all addictions. Now, I like to say it like this: the world uses something called AA, NA. Amen. Twelve steps. Yeah. If it works for the beginning, that's fine. I went there. I was in trouble when I talked about this, but this is what I believe, and I think it's true. If you use it in the beginning and it works for you, fine. But if they try to make it a doctrine, then it's false. That's right. The Bible does not say greater power. When it refers to a higher power, it's talking about those in authority over you, not your God. Amen. But they say, just believe in a rock. As long as you don't get high today. But not getting high don't save you. Amen. Not getting high don't make you clean. Amen. Then they say clean time. They count how long they've been gone. They give you little keychain colors for every time you do it. Then when you fall or relapse, you got to start all over again. Not in Jesus. Amen. Because you got to realize something. There ain't no such thing as recovery. Amen. I'm not never been in. If recovery. If I'm in recovery, then Jesus on the cross didn't do nothing for me. Amen. He recovered me 2,000 years ago with the blood that he shed on that Amen. Amen. So how am I in recovery? Amen. 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 Come on. Then why am I counting clean time? Clean time? What clean time? I've been there it yesterday. Amen. Somebody asked me how long you clean? Yesterday. Amen. You know why? Because I thought stupid. Yeah. I acted stupid. It ain't just I got high. My sin nature was stupid. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So I got to ask God to clean me every day. Amen. Are y'all yes. feeling me on this? Amen. Amen. Clean time. But I'm clean when I'm in Christ. Because he made sure I was clean past, present, and future. Amen. So why I got to count? Amen. Amen. Yes. I ain't got to count that stuff. Yeah. But let's keep going on. Go to Proverbs chapter 23. Two more verses. And then we're going to get ready to explain the ABCD concept. Y'all can fake around for this. Amen? That's why the devil is attacking him. Proverbs 23. The devil's attacking him. The devil's attacking me. But you know what? It's like I preached the other day. Just look at him and tell him, I know what's wrong with you. You know I got faith. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I see some faces left here too. But don't worry about it. But I see the ones that need to stay here too. Yeah. You got faith. Yeah. Amen. 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 Proverbs 23. Don't lose your faith. 
Verse 7. What does it say? It says, God, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. Amen. He eat and drink, said he to thee, but his heart is not with me. So that means you're stinking thinking. That's another thing that the, the, the MA and 12 step program. Refer to yourself as an addict. My name is so and so and I'm an addict. The devil's a lie. If you're in Christ Jesus, he ain't never called you nothing but saved, blessed, victorious, more than a conqueror. My son, my heir, my king, my princess. Why are you calling yourself something you're trying to get away from? But if you call yourself that, then you are that. They hated me when I finally got to Christ and I arrived in the place. They said, my name is more red and I'm an addict and I'm in recovery. Just so I can say something. That's a wait a minute. If you call 